and then you have a frame. I think, I hope it's gonna be that easy. I don't know if it's gonna be that easy. I feel like they're not expensive and they're not too complicated. And as I said, it's really easy now. I hope it's gonna be that easy. I don't know if it's gonna be that easy. I feel like they're not too complicated. It's really easy now. It's really easy now. It's really easy now. This is so difficult. It's really difficult. This is so difficult. That was so exhausting. Hi, YouTube. So recently, I, actually a while ago, I completed a painting. Um, I'm just gonna show it to you real quick. At the beginning of this year, I wanted to start my first endeavor into oil painting and it was really fun. It was really nice to kind of experience the difference between oil and other paints. I started with the small painting of the Eiffel Tower that I finished a few months ago. It was kind of just shitting. Shitting? It was kind of just sitting in my... Uh, <laughs> it was just sitting in my shelf for a bit. This is the final product. I'm quite happy with it. As you can see, this is the, the example image and everything. It had a bit more potential than it actually just showed being kind of naked as it is. So I knew I wanted one of these kind of... Um, brownish, goldenish, rusty, but also kind of shiny, vintage, antique frames. So I looked online, I wanted to have it custom made. I kind of thought about it, but I knew it was gonna be expensive. So I didn't want that because I guess I'm a bit cheap. I mean, if you can save money, I do will save money. So, um, So I actually did some thinking in my head and I actually came up with two different kinds of ways to do these frames for yourself. I haven't tried them yet. I feel like they're not expensive and they're not too complicated. I hope that at least one of them turns out nicely. Okay, so uh, for the first method, what we're gonna use, like the essential main item is this thing right here. It's a long, piece of a thing. I'm gonna explain it later. I'm actually gonna explain it right now. Um, it's... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is a so-called baseboard slash wall mounting. Wall molding, I think. I'm not an expert at all. See, it's called a baseboard or a wall molding. Yes, that's, I think, the right term. And I'm just gonna show you real quick. So this is what we're gonna be working with. So it's usually used to connect um, or decorate the edge between a wall and the floor of a room. So, um, you know, so that the edge is not exposed. I think these were in fashion like a few decades ago or as something, I don't know. But nowadays, they look kind of ugly if you're asking me to be used in your actual room and everything. I think that's the reason why this was at a huge discount in my local hardware store. Each piece was I think a dollar and a half or the equivalent of a dollar and a half, which is incredibly low as a price. So I bought two because the other ones were out of stock, like they were gone already because they are so cheap. You can probably already uh, assume what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this in the right shape and length and um, Then we're gonna piece it back together until it looks like a frame and hope for the best <laughs> This is wrong, sorry <laughs> So we're gonna do that again
Oh no. Am I that stupid? Oh. So I'm gonna start with the rough cut right here and then I'm gonna continue with the rest of these. I'm gonna use one of these saws, they're not that expensive, you maybe have one of them at home. And maybe I'm gonna use this one as well. Also, since there is probably gonna be a bit of dust flying around, I definitely recommend wearing a mask because that dust can, you know, that can land in the air and it can land in your ungs. Will ungs? Oh. So just be safe and wear a mask. I mean, these days everyone has a mask, right? And you're wearing it, right? Okay, let's start. Be careful when you use these. First one done. Also the second one. Third one done. Fourth one done. Finally. So exhausting. So now we are left with pieces that look kind of like this and what we have to do now is obviously cut them to the perfect size and shape. We have to outline that shape and then we basically do the same that we did before but with a little bit more precision. Okay, so it's two hours after I last recorded and I'm still at basically the same edge. This is so difficult to be precise. I finally cracked it. <laughs> This is so difficult because there's this middle part in every cross -side. It's really difficult to do stuff. I'm thinking about switching my methods. Bye. It's the second day I just woke up and maybe we have more luck today. So it's day three now, because on day two I didn't do anything because I just laid in bed all day, we're not gonna talk about it. But we're now gonna actually do something and we're going to the hardware store to buy a little something and hopefully that will help us. Okay, so they did have what I needed, but it was the wrong size, so now I ordered it on the internet. And in the meantime, I'm gonna just clean up my room because, as you can see, that one day that I did do something, I did make quite a mess, so I'm gonna kind of try to undo that now.
Okay, so for our second method, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with an already existing frame. I got this one off of Ikea, and as we can see, it has some sort of detail, which is great. However, it's a bit too thin, so we're gonna work on that first, and you're gonna see what I mean as we go by. Hi, uh, so I'm recording a voiceover right here, right now, because the way that I explained what you can see here while recording was kind of not good, so I'm just going to do it again. Anyway, so to expand the inner edges, which is of course completely optional, just take some sturdy-ish paper and cut it into strips with your desired thickness. Then just tape them on with washi tape and then you can apply stronger glue later on. The next step uh, is to just take some cheap wooden beams with again the thickness of your choice and cut them to size. Um, take some glue and stick them to the frame to dry so that at the end it will look something like what you see here and you know use the glue that you want to use just remember to use non-toxic glue because I want you to be safe. <laughs> Okay, so the glue has dried. We now have our outer wooden framing just as the inner paper lining. The next step, what we're gonna use is, drum roll, air drying clay. We're gonna use clay to make our own little ornaments, basically. That's it, but that's not quite it. It's almost it, so it's just, you'll see what I mean. Okay, I'm all set up and I'm just gonna start with the clay. Okay, so this is voiceover me again, I know. <laughs> anyway, just use some non-toxic clay and I recommend using exactly the one that I use because I really like it. For my roughly 22 by 35 centimeter frame, I used one and a quarter kilogram or two and three quarter pounds worth of clay. I plan on using these tools right here and started by placing little dots of the clay on the corners of the frame. Next, I made these longer tubes and placed them down to use them as a basic shape for what's to come later. I wanted the frame to naturally get thicker on the outer edges, which is why I blended the clay in on one side and let it dry till it looked something like this. Okay, so a few hours have passed and the clay that we've applied already has almost completely dried, which means we can already continue working on even more details. Also, I stored my stuff in an airtight bag so that it doesn't dry down when I still want to use it, obviously, so... Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god, I just realized <laughs> like there was a piece of dough right here. The little curvy thing on this one is gone. <sighs> Anyways, we're gonna fix that real quickly because this is easier than I thought. Okay, so it's past midnight by now and I'm gonna call it a day. Good morning, I just woke up and we're just gonna have a look at the frame. Oh, things stayed in shape quite well. Nice. The 
first thing that I think I'm gonna do is use some super glue to glue on some of these ends that have kind of become free. Fingers and my fingers are attacking everything. I just lost it because it went to the ground. Okay, this is me once again. Just a quick little PSA, don't use super glue. It's just gonna stick to your fingers and it's not gonna be fun at all. Just use hot glue like I used right here. I feel like hot glue is my best friend because it's just always reliable. There's nothing to add, I think. I did go a little bit more, oh. <laughs> I did go a little bit more overboard than I wanted to. I'm gonna continue working when it's dry, or even later probably. Also, yes, this is such a frame with a mirror in a very oval shape. However, I didn't make this myself. Um, I got this secondhand about a year ago. This is my setup for today because I just wanted to switch it up a little bit. You can visibly see the hot glue. And it is messy, but we just have to be patient. Hi. And as you can see, I can lift the whole thing up without any wiggle. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do today I think either I'm gonna work on these areas in between because I feel like there has to be something or I'm gonna work on the corners because they definitely have to come out more and be accentuated to have the look that I want. Yeah, let's see. I just don't know what to do with the corners. I'm kind of, I feel like I want to make them bigger and accentuate them, but whatever I do, it looks kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> Okay, I worked on this today now for almost two hours and I am gonna take a break. Bruh. Anyway. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna continue working on this for today, but that's okay. It's day, I don't know what day it is. Let's just start. Oh no. Whoops. I think I'm gonna glue something today. I knew that I was gonna glue today again. Yeah. So, you know, now that I've done this already, I can really tell you that you shouldn't stress out about the details at this stage of the frame. I often created intricacies for basically nothing because I later added even more volume of clay on top of it. So my tip is to get the very general shape, size, and volume right before the, you know, nitty gritty details. But at the same time, I think it's also great to just experiment and do what you feel like. At the end of the day, I want this to be a guide and, you know, a DIY, but not a strict instruction manual with every last step for every last detail. So. You know, that at the end of the day, you have something that is not a copy of mine or anyone's frame, but is, as cheesy as it sounds, your very own and very unique frame. And I mean, you can still see what I'm doing in detail, so 
uh, I guess that'll help as well. Can you, Can you clarify, clarify what you mean? <laughs> I'm not actually sure what that is referring to. Yeah, hello, it's me again. And I just have to say, and I just wanted to... Uh, I just wanted to say that, yes, I did for some reason create so much more content than I expected. I ended up being way too much for just one video, which means that, yes, good for you. There's gonna be multiple parts, and if you wanna watch the second part and, you know, find out what the hell I am suspiciously so referring to at the end of this first part, then tune in around the 23rd of December, meaning basically tomorrow after this video drops. Um, on these timings, it depends of course on where on the earth you live, and then you can tune in, and I hope to see you there again. Until then, um, have sweet dreams, and um, if you don't have good dreams, you may need to look for a therapist because nightmares are not nice. <laughs> I'm speaking with experience. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye.